as you're getting ready to do your first couple Python projects, another tool that you might find useful is Git. Git, spelled G-I-T, is a version control program. It's a really good job to take whatever you're working and take a snapshot of it and set it aside. And that way, if you ever make a change that you wish you could undo, you can walk back to that snapshot and start over. The other thing Git is really good for is if I'm working on code with someone else, I make some changes, they make some changes, we wanna merge those together. Git has great tools for doing that and being very clear about whose changes are being kept, what's being overwritten, and then being able to create a new snapshot of that that we can then both refer to and work from. It's good, the larger the team, the more important it is to have something like that to help everything work together. But what you'll probably find it most useful for to start out with is people often share their code as this Git snapshot, which is called a repository, as a Git repository, and you can very conveniently go and just pull down a collection of files, images, whatever, pull it down right to your machine and work from it. So it's another, in addition to pip, it's another way to be able to get someone else's code on your machine. To install it on a Mac, the most straightforward way that I know is to go to the App Store and install Xcode. Xcode is a collection of tools for software engineers specifically working on the Mac. The only downside is that Xcode is really big and it takes a long time to download and it includes a lot of other things other than Git. But after you've downloaded it and installed it, you have Git and you don't have to do, take any other steps or do anything else. So it's a pain in the sense that it's a huge download and you have to wait for it, but it's very straightforward in the sense that there are very few steps. Once you have gone and installed it, you can go back to your command line and type git space dash dash help. This offers you a list of commands that you can use to interact with Git, things that it can do. Git's an extremely powerful program. We are not gonna touch most of these. There's just a couple that are useful to know starting out with that we'll walk through. The first of these commands is git init. It creates a new repository. It says everything in this directory and all of the subdirectories under it are going to be part of this snapshot. Before we create one, we'll navigate up to our desktop, create a new directory called new repository. And then we'll cd into our new repository. And then by typing git init, we create a new repository based in that directory. We can use the command touch readme.txt to create a new file that's empty called readme.txt. Then the next git command we'll need to know is git add and the name of a file. So in this case, git add readme.txt. This tells git when we take a snapshot, include this file in that snapshot. By default, it's not going to include anything. The next thing we do is git commit dash am so include all the queued up changes, including this added file. And then M says with the message. And then we give it that message in quotes. Read me added. This is a very short message that explains what changes we made with this commit. Commit is the command that tells Git to take a snapshot of all the files that it's tracking right now freeze it at its current place, save that out, and then add this little note, read me added. We get some helpful feedback from Git that one file was changed. To see a history of our commits, we can type git log. This gives us some helpful information. Because we've only made one commit so far, there's only one item in this list of commits and it has a very long name that's very unlikely to ever be recreated. So this is its unique name. And we can see that it was created by me 
and at what time it was created and what date. And then we can see the note that we created, README added. So git init, git add, git commit, and git log are enough to get you started. Included with the notes of this video are a helpful, there's a helpful website with the basics of Git, how it works, and instructions to do the things that you might want to do. I've also included a link to some Git resources in case you feel like going deeper or need to know more what's going on. There's some fantastic online resources. Git's a powerful tool, and because it's powerful, some of the things it can do are a little complicated. Most of what I use it for is what I just showed here. Add, commit, occasional log, and occasional init. There's more you can do with it, and if you ever need to, the resources attached will help you navigate that.